Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Anno 1800. This is a new game from Martin Wallace published by Cosmos Games. It plays from two to four players in about 120 minutes. At least that's what the box says. Uh, yes, the box yes. says that. So Anno 1800 is based on a video game I have never played. No, me neither. Uh, yeah, but a friend that we played with once, he had played it and he saw similarities. And that's the only thing we're going to say about that. Yes. But it's obviously based on that, which we're going to come back to in the artwork and component part. Yes. This <laughs> is a game where you basically build factories that can make stuff so that when you make that stuff you can build new factories to make better stuff and when you have the stuff you need you play cards from your hand to get victory points and to get even more uh, actions abilities and stuff yeah yes and that's actually ac pretty accurate even though it was a lot of stuff that's what you're going to do in the game it's an action selection game on your turn you're going to do one action and most of the time you are going to produce resources to as i said build a factory or play a card from your hand the easiest way to get points is to play cards from your hand. You're going to get some points from end of game scoring and a couple of points for finding things to add, animals to add in the zoo and artifacts as well, which is really abstracted by yes. just having the right person at the right time, time, which is at the end of the game. That is basically what you are going to do in the game. You will be placing uh, workers of different colors, which basically are, I think, different kind of, they have different lines of work, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. like farm work, industry work, and, yes. and, and no, more noble people. Noble people and, and stuff. So you are going to place those on the factories to produce the resources you need to do the action you want to do. Yeah. And then they're just going to do one action, and next they're going to do one action. So it's kind of very short micro turns, doing one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. And then when you cannot do anything more, you're just going to do a reset action where you get everything back. One important thing you also do is that you trade with the other people. So when I, when you have built a factory, I don't actually have to build a factory. If I have enough trade tokens, I can trade for that resource once every turn to be able to use that resource on my turn. Yes. So you can you can build everything yourself. You have to kind of leech and use other people's things. Yes. So this was a game that came out last year in German, but the English version was not readily available at, until this year. So I'm calling it a 2021 game yeah. for whatever that, whatever that means and who cares. So let's talk about the artwork and the components. It's very simple. Uh, the board really consists of like all the different factories. Mm. And first how we play this, <clears throat> it was a hurdle to get to know the board. Yes. When you play it a couple of times, it is the same factory on the same space every mm -hmm. time, so you can kind of get an overview pretty, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But I still miss some kind of iconography that tells me, okay, this resource is produced by a red building or a blue building. Mm -hmm. so, so this I kind of miss still after uh, some place, and, and it doesn't look beautiful, it looks and it shouldn't. No, no, it's a lot of tiles. If, if you would, uh, if you would uh, prioritize like looks mm -hmm. over what it is now, yeah. it would be probably horrible to keep track of everything. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The first time we played, I had to say, okay, I need this now. Where is that? Has anyone built that? And the easiest way to see if anyone has built it is to even either ask or yeah. to look at the table to see because there's two of each factory to see. Okay, one is built. And I can still build it, or two is built, and then you see the outline of it on the board. So yeah. that is kind of um, the player we played it who had played the video game actually had uh, was easier for him because he knew, oh, you use these two resources to buy this resource. Mm. So he knew like of the chains, they are the same yeah. as in the video game. Mm. So I feel like the first time you play, you're gonna have a bit of a hassle to remember those as you said. Yeah. So the artwork. Um, there is none, kind of. There are some persons, but they're on some cards, and yes. you, I don't look at the persons. When I look at the card, I look at what do I need, what do I get. Yes. Yeah, but one thing that's important is that everything is imported from the video game. Oh, that is true. But I haven't played the video game, so I no. wouldn't know. No, I'm just saying that things are. Some of the resources are pixelated and look like they are like, not forgot. in a high enough resolution. Like, oh, my board game. I don't have the newest board game system, so I have a lower resolution on this resource. Well, well, it doesn't look horrible, but when I inspect the board, looking mm -hmm. at the different icons mm -hmm. for the different resources, I'm thinking to myself, is this pixelated or isn't it? And yes. that is a bad thing. Don't do that. So it's not there. It's a little like grainy or yeah, yes. not smooth. A bit like that. So, but let's talk about the, the, the gameplay. As I said, the gameplay is pretty simple. 
you do one thing and most of the time you do get resources or produce resources to build something or to play a card. So a couple of questions. Uh, first, let's talk a bit about the, the length of the game before yes. I go. I have a couple of questions for you about yeah. that. Because the game can be long because the way the game works is that every person you have, you get a card, which is that person, very abstracted. And when you play the card, you will get points and get some kind of a one-time ability. And the game ends when somebody plays their last card. So how long the game is depends how many people you need. And you're going to need people to be able to get better things, to do what you want. So you're going to end up getting more and more people throughout the game. And that can end the game, make the game be pretty long. Mm. With the fourth time, four player game took like two hours and 45 minutes. Uh, the two player games has been shorter, one and a half hours, something like that, which I think is really nice. I think we haven't played three player, only two and four, the times we played and the four player or the three player game might be like a, a, a smooth in between, but I think the four player game was a bit long for what this game is. Yeah, and and I think you can get the play time down something if you oh, yeah. play it a, a lot of times. And, um, it, and it depends on yeah. what happens in the game. If somebody yeah. tries to rush, you could kind of do it. Yeah, uh, and that is interesting the way that you, you balance your cards because you need the people to mm -hmm. do things, but then it comes to a point in the game where getting more people doesn't really benefit you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you're like okay but do I need those cards because uh, if I can just finish what I have here and maybe be the f person that ends the game that mm -hmm. will net me some bonus points so you're trying to be get cards but not too many and I, I like that balance but that also can ten can prolong the game uh, a bit yes yeah, so uh, two players I felt was pretty okay the yeah. time length and four players was a bit too long so for me of those two I think two player was better I'm going to talk more about the reasons later because yeah. overall I thought the two player game was a lot better than the four player game yeah cool and uh, I'm going to talk about that a bit more in the gameplay uh, but I had a couple of questions for you as I said about the gameplay yeah. so we said like you, we we're basically doing almost the two same actions over and over again uh, so two uh, two questions. Question number one, which is the most important one, mm. is it fun? And the other question is, oh, and what is fun, uh, or what is not fun? And the other question is, do you feel like it's repetitive? Because as we said now, two hours, forty five minutes with four players doing the same two actions. Well, you have more than two actions oh, in yeah, the yeah, game, yeah. and I like the player aid. Just to say that it has Very a good. player aid with with all the actions and what happens when you do them, mm -hmm. and some like basic rules for those actions. I like that. So the first time I played, I was just like looking through those action sheets and I'll, okay, what what is my options here? But usually you do one of two actions. Yes. That is like the the normal thing to do. The others are kind of edge cases, like yeah. resetting, exchanging your car or you are upgrading of course workers, upgrading workers you will workers. do and getting more yes. workers um, but, but all in all yes I think this game can get a little repetitive mm -hmm. I think what helps for that repetitiveness mm -hmm. I don't know replay value uh, yeah is that you have different cards on your hands yep. you're going for different kind of buildings but yes. still you're building buildings and also the final scoring can mm -hmm. also change up how you play things but if you don't like that core mechanism yep. you're uh, yeah but I'm thinking I'm, I'm not thinking repetitive like in, in multiple plays but in in, in one play yeah you're do doing you, the same stuff all do the you, time but do you do you do but you get bored do you like do you feel like oh I'm doing the same thing again or do you feel like you get the progression because I feel like I have the progression yeah I think so because you're building like the the easy buildings first mm -hmm. and then it gets uh, more and more difficult and you're trying to optimize your turn so that you don't like use many turns to reset all the time mm -hmm. so you get like the maximum out of your workers yeah. and it's very crunchy but I'm because I'm sitting there and thinking okay I'm three red workers for this mm -hmm. I'm trying to build this building and then I get this but then I don't have those three workers yeah. that I spent the timing of the and, actions yes and that is very interesting and also uh, the, the 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 fact that the players are ending the game mm -hmm. themselves deciding yeah. that um, creates this race feel yeah. Yeah. that also helps me stay motivated throughout the game yeah so the reason I think the two-player game is is better is because there's less downtime uh, obviously and it's a shorter game but the reasons for that is because there's not so much to think about what I'm gonna do on my turn mm. because the game is kind of straightforward you're saying the timing is important I agree on that mm. like you it's important to do this before that and that's something you can think about but it's not like when you play four players and you play a heavy crunchy euro game I can like plan my turn and think okay what can I do the next four turns here is probably 
oh, I'm going to play this card now because I can produce those and I can play that card mm -hmm. or I'm going to build this building. Mm -hmm. So you're going to look at your cards and in the beginning of the game, I'm going to look at my cards and see, do I have things that overlap a lot? I'm probably going to build that factory and then I'm going to try to sneak in the other ones and get a few more cards and hope I get the cards that match with that. And, and it's not... And it's not a brain burning thing for me in any ways. And no, just, I agree. And that's the reason I like it a lot more in two players because then I can just, I can just do the thing. Like your turn is super quick, and then I do my turn. Yes, I think so. This is not a game that I'm just like, oh, we're gonna play Anno. This is gonna be epic. This mm -hmm. is gonna take like four hours, and we're gonna have melt our brains. And mm -hmm. we need four players, like in Wildcatters, when yeah. it all adds that much interaction and mm -hmm. fun. In Anno uh, 1800, I felt actually, I was surprised by how well it worked with two players. Yes. Because we traded a lot in a four-player game. Mm -hmm. And and I saw like, okay, in a two-player game, I need to have more resources myself. I don't need to trade as much. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will get like a lot of people. That means I end up with like a ton of cards. Yep. And the game will last forever. It didn't. It worked very well with two yep. as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I really feel like in this kind of game, for me, I want the pace to be quick because it's best like that for me. Yeah, so I think like I would rather play this two player again than with more players because I kind of get the same experience. Yeah. Uh, because the training is uh, worked really well with you, as you said, just I'm not going to rehash that you just told me uh, or told everybody because this is a video. And I was telling you something yes, here. <laughs> uh, but the, the flow is so much better. And the thing like this might not be the crunchiest or heaviest game or like the most deep game. Uh, but I just I, I have I have fun. It's cozy for me. Mm. I'm sitting there. I'm just like enjoying myself and I get that feeling, which is uh, I cannot explain it. But it's that feeling I get when I'm just having this like bubbly feeling of this is fun. Yeah. And I get that when a game is just like, it might be super, super heavy, but then I have to get past that rules thing. But when I get to that where I just like feel like, oh, this is just perfect for my brain. It just like works really well. And it's just like me sitting on this train and just, and, and that doesn't mean I'm super good at the game or I will be good at all those games. I did mm. win this one a couple of times. Okay? Uh -huh. But the, it, it feels like it's, it's the one that just, my brain just have a really yeah. fun time processing and doing the actions, even though they might be simple and even though they might not be that deep. Yeah, I agree. So what do you think about the luck factor in the game? Because there are uh, three decks of cards and you are going to be drawing from those cards. And every game that has drawing of cards has luck. And you might in the beginning get five cards that has uh, a sausage on them yeah. or you can get all the cards with different things, probably not because Yeah, I, I, I think that luck is a factor, but yeah. it doesn't bother me. Yes. Uh, first of all, you can change your cards, mm -hmm. um, but you use an action on that. So if you have to change a lot of cards, that is definitely not a benefit at all. I think I did it a last game like six times. Yeah, you did and it a I lot. still won. Yeah, you still won. By quite a and, few and, and then you can basically like hold on to those symbols that you know that you can get and yeah. try to get more of that. Mm -hmm. But chances are that you're not going have everything overlapping yep. and that means that you because of that trading mechanism mm -hmm. I don't think it's that hurtful to get symbols that don't match because I can just trade if I don't have that symbol myself somebody has to be able to build it though yeah that so, is true uh, I'm, there's some some <clears throat> of these uh, difficult buildings that mm -hmm. will not be built every game oh, yeah. and if I'm stuck with those cards I, yes. I would like to trade them away but the fact that you can trade them away is really good yes. and the fact you're also drawing I think we drew like 20 cards in, in, in the game we, we, we just recently played and that feels like it it comes to a point where I draw that many cards that it isn't that huge of a hassle mm. or that huge of a luck factor. So um, yeah, should we do some final thoughts? I think yes. we talked about a lot of things we think about the gameplay and the luck and the player count. So do you want to begin? Yes, I can begin. I think I have fun when I play this game. Mm -hmm. I think it has some good uh, things going for it. Yeah. I think Morgan Wallace is really good at making these like quick turns um, thingies that he does. Thingies. Uh, thingies that he does. Um, I would guess that this is a good implementation of the video game. No idea. But I don't know. It's, it, it seems like it's taken from a video game, so I can get it. But um, I, 
I'm not in love with it. Mm -hmm. I would say it is a good game, so I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah, I, I think it's, I have a fun time. I think it's cozy. I don't think it's amazing. I agree with most of what you said. I like these type of turns, especially two players was for me better than four players. I like the small interaction. I like the planning of the timing of the actions of trying to make a, a best possible uh, like chain of the actions that you choose to do. I think there's a lot to like here, but it's not amazing, but it's one I want to keep in a collection and play hopefully sometime in the future for Keeper Cult 2. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 7.5. Yes. And that is the end. If you are still here and you have not subscribed, please do so now by clicking the subscribe button. And it's free and fun for everyone. If you want to do something that's not free but still fun for everyone, you can go to patreon.com slash boardgamingramblings and support us there. We post some uh, behind the scenes stuff. We have a Discord channel and uh, that's fun. Yeah. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Cinema. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye bye.